In this video, I'm going to go through the second review for the similarity unit quiz coming up. For number one, which of the following sets of measurements would justify the statement that FG is parallel to HJ? Well, if those are parallel, we would have some congruent corresponding angles, and that would be enough to prove that the triangle on top and the big triangle are two similar triangles. Now, the whole idea here is that for similar triangles, the sides are in proportion, so you could check the proportions of the full sides, or you could recognize um, a corollary to that, which is the side splitter theorem, where EF over FH should be equal to EG over GH. So you're really just checking to see which one makes these pieces proportional. So I'm going to try answer choice 115 for EF, FH is 10, EG is 18 and JG is 14. So I'm testing answer choice A here. So if I take 15, put it over 10, is that gonna be the same as if I take 18 and put it over 14? Well, remember how to solve a proportion, we would just have to cross multiply here. So if I do 14 times 15, I get 210. And if I do 10 times 18, I get 180. So notice these aren't equal, so that proportion is not true. So it can't be answer choice A. If I try this setup again with answer choice 2, let's see what happens. EF is 10, FH is 8, EG is 15, and JG is 12. Well, if I put 10 over 8 and set that equal to 15 over 12, let's see what happens. Well, 10 times 12 when I cross multiply is 120. And 8 times 15 is also 120. So those would be the side lengths that make those pieces proportional, which would mean that FG would have to be parallel to HG. Number two, in the diagram it is known that EF is parallel to GH. So again, we're working with some similar triangles here because we have those corresponding angles. And it says, which of the following ratios would equal the dilation constant needed to map GH onto EF. So one thing you have to recognize here is that we're getting smaller. And remember, one way to get my dilation constant or my scale factor is to take some new side and divide it by some corresponding old side. So in this case, my new would be EF and my old would be GH because I'm going from the big to the small. So one possible scale factor would be the small side EF over the big side GH. Now, if I looked at my answer choices, that's not there. But I could also do DF over DH. That's a possibility. Or my last set of sides, I could do DE, that small side, over the corresponding big side DG. So I just need to look through my answer choices to see which one is there. And it looks like DF over DH would be the small side over the old side, or you could think about it as new over old. Number three, in the diagram, triangle ABC is similar to triangle DEF. So remember that means the angles are the same and the sides are in proportion. If AB equals six, right there, and AC equals eight, which statement will justify similarity by side, angle, side? Well, remember for side, angle, side, I need to prove that two pairs of sides are uh, in proportion and the angle between those sides is congruent. So I can already rule out answer choice C and D because those are telling me that I would need to know that angle C is congruent to angle F. However, that would not be side, angle, side. That would be more of a side, side, angle argument, which doesn't work to prove similarity. So I'm going to check the proportions here. If I start with answer choice one, if DE equals nine and DF equals 12, I can check the proportion again. I can set AB over DE and see if that's equal to my small side AC over its corresponding big side DF. So let's see, six over nine, is that equal to 8 over 12. You could also do 9 over 6 and 12 over 8 if you had these flipped. If I cross multiply for both of those diagonals, I see that 72 is equal to 72. So those would be the side lengths that make those sides proportional. So I've got two proportional sides and the angle between them 
is congruent. Number four, in the diagram, angle F prime, E prime, G prime is the image of angle F, E, G. After a dilation of, by a scale factor of 1.5, centered at C. So I took the distance E, F, right, and I made that 1.5 times bigger to get E prime, C. If the measure of angle F, E, G is 30 degrees, which of the following is the measure of F prime, E prime, G prime? Well, this one's actually a slam dunk, because if you remember a property of dilations, dilations, they don't preserve distance, but they do preserve angle measure. So if I dilate an angle that's 30 degrees, it's going to create another angle that's again 30 degrees. Number five. In right triangle PQR, altitude QS has been drawn from Q to hypotenuse PR. So I'm already thinking this might be one of those Hills or SAS problems, because I see this altitude QS in the right triangle, but let's keep reading. Find the length of hypotenuse PR. And it says, hint, use the Pythagorean theorem. Because if you look at the whole big right triangle right here, I actually have two of the sides already. It's like if I gave you this picture right here where one side was 15, the other side was 20, and I was just missing that. I could use the Pythagorean theorem, which says if I take a leg, square it, add it to the other leg, square it, that should be equal to the hypotenuse squared. So in this case, my legs are 15 and 20, and I'm looking for that hypotenuse. 15 squared plus 20 squared is 625. And if I want to get rid of the squared on the x, the opposite of squaring something is taking a square root. So if you type that into your calculator, you'll find that your missing piece for PR is 25. So that's going to be the length of that big hypotenuse there. I'll label PR as 25. And now they want me to find the length of PS. Well, this is either going to be one of those Hills problems where I take the hypotenuse over a leg equals that same leg over its corresponding side, or it's going to be a SAS problem where it's side 1 over my altitude equals my altitude over side 2. But if you notice, I actually don't know any information about QS, which is my altitude here. So there's no way this could be a SAS problem. I have to look at Hills. So the first thing I want to identify is what are my labels. So I know 25 is my big hypotenuse there. And when I talk about legs, L1 and L2, I'm talking about the outside of my right triangle. So I'm going to label that 15 as L1, and I'm going to label that 20 as L2. Now, if 15 is L1, the piece of the hypotenuse that's broken up by the altitude on the same side of leg one is going to be side one. And whatever SR would be, that would be side two, but I don't know him yet. So I'm going to substitute it. I'm going to take my hypotenuse, put it over leg one, set that equal to leg one over its corresponding side one. And notice the number along the diagonal is the same. So if I figure out what that bottom piece is, it's going to be the same as that top piece there. So let's see. My hypotenuse, that's what we actually found in part A, right? That's 25. My side 1 is, oh, excuse me, my leg 1 right down there is 15. And again, if I know what that bottom piece is, my top piece in the other fraction is exactly the same. And side 1, Y, or PS, is exactly what I'm looking for. If I cross multiply there, 25 times Y is just 25Y. And 15 times 15 is 225. I can divide out the 25 because it's linked by multiplication and 225 divided by 25 is just 9. So the missing piece for PS is just 9. Again, I knew this was a Hills problem because I didn't know any information about the altitude. If I did know any information about the altitude, it would probably have to be a SAS problem. Number 6. In the diagram shown, BD is parallel to CE with AB equal to 4, BC equal to 6, AD equal to x plus 3, and DE equal to 2x plus 1. Well, there's lots of things you could do here. You could set up a similar triangles proportion where you do small over big equals small over big. But I noticed that because BD and CE are parallel, I could use the side splitter theorem, which just says part over part 
equals part over part. So I'm going to take 4 over 6, set it equal to x plus 3 over 2x plus 1. Be very careful with your cross multiplication here. If you're multiplying 4 times 2x plus 1, you're going to have to distribute it there because you're multiplying one term to two terms. And along my other diagonal, that's 6 times x plus 3. 4 times 2x is 8x. 4 times 1 is just 4. 6 times x is 6x. And 6 times 3 is 18. Now this is going to be a little bit more than a two-step equation, so I'm going to write it up here where I have a little bit more room. I'll start by subtracting 6x on both sides to collect all my x terms together. 6x minus 6x is 0, so all I'm left with on the right-hand side is 18. And 8x minus 6x is 2x. So if I subtract my constant over 4 to get my constants together, I can see that 2x is equal to 14. And if I divide out the 2, I see that x is equal to 7. So before I even read the second part, I'm actually going to substitute back in. So rather than AD being x plus 3, I'll label AD as 10, just 7 plus 3. And if I make a quick substitution, 2 times 7 plus 1, 2 times 7 is 14, plus 1 is just 15. I don't know if that helps me, but I'm going to label those since I know what x is. Now it says if CE equals 30, find the length of BD. Notice I'm using a different variable for BD just because it's a, you know, we already used x there. So there's lots of things you could do here. I'm going to set up a similar triangle's proportion because my small triangle on top has these side lengths, 4, 10, and what I'm looking for, y, and my big triangle on the bottom there, you got to think a little bit harder about how to get those sides. A, C, E. I know the bottom side is 30. If I add up 10 and 15, 10 plus 15 is 25. And if I add up the 4 and the 6, AC is 10. So since I know all of my sides, I'm just going to take one corresponding side over its bigger corresponding side equals the small corresponding side over its bigger, bigger corresponding side there. So I can set up a proportion 4 over 10 equals y over 30. Again, because those segments are parallel, we have congruent all corresponding angles here, and we're able to say these triangles are similar, and therefore their sides are in proportion. Again, if I cross multiply, 4 times 30 is 120, 10 times y is 10y, and if I divide out the 10, I find that my missing length BD is just 12. Number seven, line segment AB has endpoints that are at negative four, negative one for A, and eight comma seven for B. Find a point Q on AB such that the ratio AQ to QB is equal to three to one, which remember that's four parts all together. So we wanna find the coordinates of point Q. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to make sure to connect these points with a straight edge so that my segment is as accurate as possible. All right, that's important here. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to keep my straight edge out and I'm going to make this into a right triangle. I'm going to find the horizontal distance between A and B right there. I'll stop when it's right under B and I'm just going to sketch in the vertical distance even though I'm not going to use that. You could if you want to. And again, notice I'm being as precise as possible. Now, the process here is that, you know, just visually so you could see it, you want to be able to break AB up into four equal parts. And you want to pick the point Q such that it's on AB so that there are three parts between A and Q and just one part between Q and B. The problem is it's kind of hard to do that on a diagonal. So our trick for that is we take the horizontal piece and we just break that into four equal parts. Now, if you count carefully, um, there's actually 14, not 14, excuse me, 12 units, if you count those boxes, between A and B horizontally. 
So if I take that distance and divide it by the four equal parts I need, each part is going to be three units long. So I'm going to make a tick mark every three boxes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve gets me to the end there. And if I want it to be a three to one ratio, I just go to the third tick mark in, and I'm going to take my straight edge one more time, and I'm just going to draw a straight line segment straight up to AB, and wherever it intersects AB is point Q. Now the reason this works is because of the side splitter theorem, so I would go back to the lesson on that if you want to know why this works. But our point for Q is just going to be 5 comma 5, such that it breaks AB up into a ratio of 3 pieces to 1 piece. Now part B is asking me what's the ratio of AQ to AB? Well notice that AQ is three equal parts, and AB is representing the whole line segment, which is broken up into four congruent parts. So that would be comparing three congruent parts to four congruent parts, so that's a three to four ratio there. Number eight. Given ABCD is a rectangle, prove EG over FG, EG over FG is equal to GB over GD. Well, this is asking you to prove that sides are in proportion, and before I can do that, I need to prove similar triangles first, so that I could say the triangles are similar, and then their sides are in proportion. And based on those sides that we're looking at, it looks like we're going to be proving that top triangle right there is similar to the bottom triangle right there. Now, there's more than one way to do this one, but I'm going to start just by rewriting my givens and ask myself how that helps me. ABCD is a rectangle. And that's given. Well, the first thing I notice here, anytime I see a bow tie or intersecting lines like that, I could label those as angle 1 and 2, and I could say those are congruent because they're vertical angles. Remember, the goal for a similarity proof is to prove that two angles are congruent. I don't need to know anything about side lengths. So why are those angles congruent? Well, vertical angles are congruent. Nice and simple. And now I'm kind of stuck. So I need to go back to my givens and ask myself, why did they tell me it's a rectangle here? What are the properties that are of a rectangle that could help me out? Well, one thing I remember about a rectangle is that opposite sides are parallel. And if I could say parallel sides, maybe I can get something going with alternate interior angles. So I'm going to just say that AB is parallel to DC, and I know that because it's a property of a rectangle. So I'm going to say in a rectangle, opposite sides are parallel. Again, I'm using some shorthand here just to save myself some time, but try to write out as many words as you can. Well, if I know the sides are parallel, I could label that angle EBG up there as angle 3, and angle GDF right there is angle 4, and I could say angle 3 congruent to angle 4, and notice if you trace it out they make the Z, right? So those are my congruent alternate interior angles. So my reason is that parallel lines form congruent alternate interior angles. Well look at that, we've got one pair of angles and another pair of angles. That's enough to say the triangle EBG is similar to triangle FDG, simply by angle angle. Now, if you could do a similarity proof, a proof for proportions is the exact same thing, just with one extra step. I'm going to state that that proportion is true, EG over FG is equal to GB over GD, and my reason for that is that corresponding sides of similar triangles are proportional. Remember, corresponding sides of similar triangles are proportional. If you want to write that out, go for it. Or if you remember the acronym and you know what order those letters go in, that's fine too.